Good afternoon and welcome to this BAFTA E Rising Star session. Um, I'm really happy to say that we have three of our nominees here today. So can we please welcome Calvin Harrison Jr. Caitlin Diva. And Michael Wall. Welcome and congratulations. Each of them looks at the responsibility of representation mm -hmm. and what that means and kind of all its facets. And I suppose Kelvin with Waves, um, it's a very particular family and a very, it's a, it's a family that we don't often see, kind of especially out of American cinema, a black <coughs> middle-class family mm -hmm. doing very well. And then obviously drama unfolding. Um, and then, the whole notion of toxic masculinity within that sphere. So I just wanted to talk about how difficult it was for you as an actor to have... Is it a burden, or were you kind of excited about being able to kind of show the world a different side? It's scary at first, because you look at it and kind of go, OK, well, in this type of situation, what stereotypes are we um, perpetuating? You know, especially in this social climate we're in right now, you have to be really careful. But at the same time, the challenge is exciting because I was like, at the end of the day, I had to go back to my instincts. When I read it, I was like, I identify it to some extent with this boy and his relationship with his dad, partially because I helped create it with Trey. <laughs> so I was like, this is me I'm kind of unpacking some of my, psych my, my, my psyche. Um, but you know, with that, you kind of go, well, how do we show this, 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 this boy, but also let us feel for his journey and as step by step kind of empathize with what he is kind of an antagonist in a lot of ways. He, he's not, he's hard to like in a lot of, in a, in a lot of moments. So, um, but it, it, it was going back to the breaking down and unpacking like, what is my relationship with my dad and who is he? And ultimately, what did he learn from his father that he passed down to me? And especially in African American homes, you know, religion's a huge part of it. We have to bring into, bring into account slavery, you know, and, and what, how did that impact bring on to like the fact that they're, we're not on the same levels? And what is it, these, what are these teachings and how is this affecting a person who has a certain level of privilege in America in 2019? And how does he move with that when not having the same burdens or struggles that his father had to go through? So it was, it was exciting to kind of heal through the movie uh, um, and, and, and repair my relationship relationship with my own father and also listen to Trey kind of speak about um, his own dad and kind of see like this this bridge between you know white and black is similar the, 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 the basis of it's a similar the foundations the same it's just the specificities that make us different and then once we start to understand each other and know that and maybe you even represent that on camera we can kind of go oh look at us we're all human beings you know <laughs> yeah. Yeah, blue story Michael kind of getting that script were you attracted to the role straight away or um, actually, I really was, but initially, it wasn't something I, I was going to do because it's kind of in the same world as Top Boy, so it was something that um, I was kind of shaky about. But then, once I got the, the script, I really loved it, and I knew that there was so much room to play because, obviously, he was a, a lot younger than Jamie, my character on Top Boy, so I just thought, um, this is something I really want to do. So when I went into the room with um, Ratman, the director, he was just like, Obviously, he's from the world, first of all, that we're representing. And also, he directed it. And he'd, done, he'd just done um, Shiro's story, which went like very big. So I was thinking, you know what? This is going to be huge. And it's my first film. You know, like, this is going to be, it's going to be good. And I knew how authentic it would be. So yeah, man, I was just very much drawn to it. I knew I was going to have fun with it. And yeah, that's, that's what we've we done. Did he let you play, kind of play with the script and play with language and have elements of improv in it that kind of made it more authentic to gain like, the teenage experience? Yeah, I mean, um, Marco for me, especially the younger Marco, it was like me in school. So that was what I wanted to create. I wanted to make it as authentic as possible because I know um, obviously a lot of Americans wouldn't see that demographic before. So if they ever get the chance to see it, I want it to be as real to the world as possible, so that's what we really wanted to communicate. Going between TV and the films you were in, I know that Caitlin, I believe there was only a week between you doing Booksmart and Unbelievable, is that it's, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very and short amount of time, yes. I don't know how many people have had a chance to watch Unbelievable, but it's based on the true story of um, 
a serial rapist in the US and kind of you play kind of one of the victims. Um, going from something to book smart, then something so intense like that. How do you kind of, in terms of mental health and resilience and those things, how do you kind of go from project to project like that? Yeah, I, I actually don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it, there's, I've realized that sometimes there is no formula for that kind of thing. There's no set plan that you can, or a checklist that you can go by. Um, you really just kind of have to take it day by day and just go for it. Um, but yeah, the, the, on my last week of filming Booksmart, um, I, I actually was getting to a point where like, oh, I'm so excited that Booksmart is made and it's so fun and everything's happy. And, and then I got to this point where I'm like, oh, I have no more work for the rest of this year. It's this classic actor panic. Um, but you literally, I hadn't booked anything. And then this came to my email and it just, it just the story is um, just so incredibly heartbreaking. And I, and I immediately just had to, had to play Marie if they would let me. Your co-stars in the sense that they, same age, same yeah. experience in a way. Um, and I want to talk about the partnership of working kind of with another actor that is kind of so pivotal and perhaps in potentially every other scene with you yeah. and the dynamic of kind of that relationship and how it's kind of built. Um, well, for me, <laughs> for me, working with um, Stephen was, it was fun because we, it was literally like the, the birth of both of us in the film industry. So it was just fun to just bounce off of each other and... Um, yeah, just build on that relationship, really, man. I just, I just really wanted to enjoy the process because I'd just come off this intense shoot of Top Boy, so I just really wanted to play. And so was Stephen, he was down for that, and he weren't really like nervous coming to set. We was always prepared, so that was the main thing. We just had a lot of time to do a lot of different things. Like we'd give Rap Man his takes, and then we'd have a lot for ourselves. And that was that was interesting because the best takes just came when we could just literally forget about the lines and just go with it and just improv it out and that was just fun man it was a very very good process and we finished the film in less than a month as well so it was it was strong man that like we had to be proper um focused and yeah just working with Stephen that was that's what I saw he was really hungry for it as well and yeah man I'd love to work with him again was there rehearsal time beforehand where you got to know <laughs> each other <laughs> uh... Yeah, like a week. <laughs> yeah, man. Because obviously, like I said, I was very much committed to Top Boy. There was not a lot of time. Um, so then, by the, obviously, I got the role before I finished. So by the time I had finished, um, we had like a week rehearsal. But we didn't really need it because it was a world that we're familiar with. And um, yeah, man, obviously, we've done the audition, so Raps knows what we're capable of. So yeah, it was, it was, it was all right. We didn't really need the rehearsals. And plus, because it's like from a place where it's just so, so real, it, I think it was better that w there weren't a lot of rehearsals, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, with, working with Beanie was just the best possible situation. It just, uh, I knew immediately when we met for the very first time that it was just going to be the best experience and that it was just going to be so, so fun um, working with her because you just fall in love with her the moment you meet her. Um, and I think it was also, I also knew immediately too that we both shared the same amount of passion for these two girls and their love for each other. So that was just uh, what we were going to be doing with each other was, was inevitable and the, the amount of t fun we were going to be having. So, um, but yeah, we, we decided to live together uh, 20 minutes into knowing each other because we <laughs> just knew that in order to have that kind of friendship come to life, you really needed to just dive in and go for it. So we moved in together and we immediately just started going over our lines. We went about um, our prep like Molly and our characters Molly and Amy in the movie would. Like it was very scheduled. We were like, okay, Monday, this is what we're going to be doing. Tuesday, okay, tally that. That's a... That's a post-it, and um, we were just very, very organized and very, very intense about it, which is, I kind of, I think it kind of mirrored Mo Molly and Amy's um, relationship. Are there particular actors or filmmakers that kind of either inspire you now or who have inspired you? I'd say 
one person that's not coming tomorrow. I really wanted to meet Leonardo DiCaprio, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh man, like, for me, he is one of the greatest ever. Like he is, he's amazing. Like, obviously, the list the list goes on. There's so many cool. amazing people within this industry, but for me, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know when when I when I knew I was nominated for this, and I'd seen that. Um, once upon a time in Hollywood, I was thinking, raw, like, these are going to be here. And I was really, really <laughs> excited to meet um, Leo. So, yeah, man. But obviously, there's, there's, there's a lot more, like I said. But yeah, that's one person for me that's really inspired me. And for me as well, Kevin Hart, he's my biggest inspiration. I know he's not like an out and out actor, but um, what he's preached to me, as I've seen him as I'm growing up, he's just kind of preached working hard. As long as you put the hours in, like I said, you're, you're, you can only get out good results. The more and more hours you put in, the better the results are going to be. And he's taught me that. And yeah, man, he's my, he's my biggest inspiration. That's for sure. Yeah. And I love Joaquin Phoenix. Still have yet to meet him or work with him, but I just love him so much. Um, there's a lot of people that actually just inspire me, the people that I've worked with and, and have worked with now multiple times. But Jason Reitman is a big... Um, inspiration and also just supporter and, and friend of mine. He's just, um, he's a director that I really, really look up to, but I, he's also just a friend and a person that I really look up to and care about. So um, he's definitely a, uh, a big inspiration for me, but also um, Lynn Shelton is another director that I've worked with that I just love so much and I want to continue to do movies with her. and. Um, she, she, I did one of her, uh, she does a lot of improv movies and she's, she's big inspiration for me too. Yeah. Um, I love Lynn Ramsey. I've mm -hmm. met her once. We had, we had, she had a cigarette and a drink in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got to kind of watch her and pick her brain and she was just so cool and she did not want to talk about work at all. <laughs> and I loved it and it was just kind of like, I was like, man, I, love, I loved all of her movies and I told her that and she was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't know, her I really want to work with because I just want to, and she's just interested, the way she sees images is just different. And Tilda Swinton, I went to that Tim Walker exhibition the other day and I saw some pictures of her and I was just like, once again, I, every movie, everything, even these photos, you are giving me everything that I want in this life. And um, uh, yes, I just want to be a black, short T Tilda Swinton. <laughs> <laughs> Takeaway line from the session. I think we're close to the end of the session. I just want to thank you all for um, your generosity, your truth. Um, I think you're all going to be incredible role models for uh, the next generation of talent coming up. Um, can't wait to see what you're all doing next. And good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.